Hello and welcome back to the top 85 games for the BBC Micro video countdown series. In at number 35, it's Wizardor. This was released in 1985 by Imagine and it was coded by Chris Roberts, who was aged only 16 at the time. Now it's a thoroughly original game for the Beeb. Uh, you play the part of a wizard who is trying to collect together the three broken parts of a sword in order to defeat an evil dragon. Uh, apparently the dragon's name is Smaun, that's Smaun, not Smaug, uh, and uh, he is lurking below the ground um, within the game itself, but you mustn't dare try to face him without having first recovered those pieces of the sword. Now, it's probably fair to say that this is phenomenally difficult, possibly even the most difficult game that was ever released for the BBC Micro. Uh, it has pixel-perfect collision detection, and the combination of the uh, controls that you need to control the game, uh, coupled with the really unforgiving nature of the gameplay, make it very, very hard. Unsurprisingly, uh, the £100 monthly prize that was a bit of a marketing ploy when the game came out, which was uh, apparently available to anyone that could prove they had completed the game, um, I'm not sure if anyone ever really did claim the prize. I'd be very, very excited to hear from anyone that, uh, that ever did manage to do that. Uh, if you ever did back in the day, um, I'd be very surprised. It's, it's such a hard game. Uh, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to survive without employing a few cheats, but we'll see how we get on. So let's take a look. OK, let's fire it up. Here we are, Wizard All, written by Chris Roberts. Fairly simple looking controls, but believe me, there's much more to the game than that. Lovely little splash screen. And here we go. So, zero to start the game. Very jolly little jingle, um, which players of this game will have heard umpteen times over, no doubt. So here we go, this is our little wizard wandering along here. Now the first thing to call out, obviously, is that the graphics are just wonderful. Um, I mean, say what you like about how difficult it is to actually play the game. As a, as a visual experience, it's just, just wonderful. Really, really well done. Love the use of colour. Um, yeah, just really, really beautiful looking game. So, we've managed to get past the first baddie. You'll notice I can't actually kill anybody yet because I haven't claimed any scrolls. So the first thing to try to do is... Oh, well, yes, that didn't really work. Um, the first thing to try to do is get that green uh, scroll up at the top. Now, of course, you're invulnerable... Sorry, you are vulnerable, not invulnerable, uh, to the uh, arrows. And indeed, you mustn't bump into anybody. And you mustn't even so much as catch the tip of your hat, as you can see there. That's, that's me done for again. Only one life left. Um, otherwise, your it's curtains for you. So, okay, we're gonna go down this ladder here. Right. Okay. Now, going up and down the ladder also uses the same controls, or the up up ladder uses the same controls as jump. So it can be quite difficult sometimes to judge whether you've got to the top of the ladder. And oh no, it didn't quite tighten that jump there. Um, yes, jumping is really your only defence against the arrows. Um, oh no. <sighs> I pressed down too soon and then got stuck on the ladder and, uh, well, that was that. So, an amazing score of zero there. Excellent work. So, we'll try that again. Um, we'll try not to invoke the cheats just yet, uh, but I dare say that that will have to happen at some point. Alright, let's see if we can at least get the uh, get hold of that scroll. I like that little toothy tower there, by the way, with his fangs. It's quite cute. Alright, so... I'm going to try this approach this time, just wait for him to plod along, okay, and then we'll follow a close step behind him, quickly down the ladder, there we go, right, now he's amazing making his way, right, now, let's go back over here, face him down, oh, and he turns around, not quite sure why, anyway, let's not question it, let's go up the ladder, and then time this, just right, and then, yes, cleared the arrow, now grab the scroll, and, oh, Oh dear, right, well, never mind. We managed to get the scroll and, and you don't lose the scroll after losing a life, which is which is good. So equipped with this scroll, I can now at least get rid of certain enemies, but not all of them. Uh, the scroll zap, uh, the green scroll zap only works against that particular type of walking baddie. It doesn't work against uh, the, the uh, archers. Right, so let's pop down here, see what's going on down here. Uh, mm, okay. No, I think I might, uh, I might avoid this area for now. Let's, uh, let's go back up the uh, back up the stairs. Here we go. Right. A bit of a glitch there. Not quite sure what happened there. All right. Now those things can drop arrows on top of your head, which is. Oh, there we go. Managed to avoid that. Oh, and up oh, right straight into another arrow. 
So I think you can already begin to appreciate just how hard this game really is. I mean, you've got no means of defending yourself except jumping. Um, the scroll doesn't work against these guys. Oh, oh right, there we go. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Got shot from above. Uh, yes, you've got no defence against those guys flying around in the sky, dropping their... Uh, well, I think they're arrows or swords, possibly. They look a little bit like the guys from Joust, actually. Or Skirmish. Flying around on a bird. Well, it's a fantasy game. I suppose anything goes. Oof, managed to avoid those uh, spikes there. Right, let's see whether we can... Uh, I don't think this... I can't get rid of him. No, these go straight through him. So there are there are other coloured scrolls that you can collect, which, uh, which give you different uh, firing abilities, and they work on different kinds of enemies. But... I think I'm right in saying you. There's no. There's no. Oh dear! You can't outrun the arrow, can you? Uh, that was a bit silly. Uh, yes. There's no. Um, there's no scroll that gives you the ability to kill the archers. I don't think. I think the, literally the only way you can defend against them is by jumping. There you go like that. All right. Let's try clearing across here. Oh, oh! Fell down the hole and an arrow through my head. There you go. An amazing five points there. So that was uh, really splendid work. Um, all right, well, I think what I might do is invoke the cheat version at this stage. Otherwise, we're just going to be watching footage of me collecting the green scroll or not collecting the green scroll over and over again, which is not particularly exciting. So we're going to use this patched version. Uh, shout out to Lurkio, by the way. Thank you very much for uh, give, providing this version on the Stardot forums. That was a big help. So we're going to go with infinite lives. Um, so ability to walk through monsters, yes arrows and swords that don't kill and we can fall any distance there we go now you might think well I mean with all of those cheats in play what's the point of playing the game but believe it or not the game still provides plenty of challenge even with all of these cheats in in play which is even more reason why there we go Walk straight through them ha 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 and I'm gonna go and claim my scroll and I can get shot with arrows no problem at all there we go I don't even quite managed to get it there there we go um, it's a, shame, it's a shame the old green scroll doesn't work against him. It would be quite fun to just zap him, but no. no see, even if you line it up with the explosion, it doesn't make any difference, does it? No. All right, anyway, let's let's move on. So, yes, as I was saying, even with all of these cheats in play, um, it it's still really quite difficult uh, to, to complete because, basically, you've got to still manage the, um, the jumps. And although the arrows can't kill you, if you get shot by an arrow when you're sort of mid-jump, um, it, it ruins the, your, your jump trajectory, and so you end up falling through the through the gaps. Uh, not the sort of nice gaps like these ones, but uh, the, the sort of plummeting gaps, which I'm sure we'll see a few of um, before this video is out. All right. Oh dear, see, there you go. So because he, he shot me with the arrow as I went to jump, I ended up falling through the hole anyway. So just trying to make your way through the game still remains pretty challenging, um, even with all of the uh, invincibility cheats that we've now enabled. Oh dear. Okay, well, let's try that one again. I'm sure we can uh, make a better stab of it this time around. Hopefully without getting stabbed, of course. All right, so just time the jump. There we go. You have to really do it just at the last possible moment. Uh, in order to clear the uh, to clear the gap, let's uh, make our way up this little staircase here. There you go, some more interesting graphics, little shields and torches on the wall. Oh, and a skeleton, skeleton, skeleton. Uh, there we go. Let's pop up here. Ah, and now we've cleared the little barrier there. You see, so now we can make a bit more progress in the game. Uh, some sort of troll bridge going on here. No, I don't know. See, I can't can't get rid of any of those guys with my green scroll, sadly. But I should be able to get rid of this chap. There we go. All right, now you see there's another colored scroll down here, which gives me a slightly different uh, firing ability. So this, this one still doesn't work against these guys, but uh, it is it is effective against certain other walking baddies. But you have to manage your inventory of scrolls. So I think you can only carry th three items i have a feeling you can only carry three items in which case you have to trade scrolls for pieces of the sword um, if you want to be able to obviously defeat the dragon at the end all right let's pop back down here then see whether we can uh, try a different approach i'm not going to deal with him no see it i mean i know that i can't kill the archers but he just can't help sometimes just trying to just, just trying to hit them really um, now I know we've got the cheats enabled, so it's it's obviously less uh, less visible now. But I mean the pixel perfection. Let's move some scrolls around. I think I need the I think I need the uh, lightning bolt for this guy. There we go. 
Um, yes, the uh, the pixel perfection of it, you know, having to time your jumps, having to, if you do want to avoid the arrows, jump at just the right time. It, it really is hard work. Oh, let's pop down here. Um, which, there you go, so the blue one, the blue blob firing mechanism works against those guys. Um, but yes, I mean, the difficulty of it really does make me question if anybody could possibly have managed to complete this game and claimed the reward. Um, I have seen some videos on YouTube of people making surprising amounts of progress with Wizard or without any cheats at all. Um, how they're able to do that, I, I don't know. You must have had to have played this game for hours and hours and hours and have just almost learnt sort of through muscle memory when to jump, when not to jump, when to wait. Um, because, uh, yeah, it's just so difficult. Now, I think that sort of jelly baby looking thing is an extra life. There we go. I mean, not that I need it, obviously, because I've got cheat mode enabled. But can you imagine how valuable that would be if you were playing this without cheats? An extra life on Wizard Or? All right, let's drop down here. Oh, now we're into a sort of magenta zone. It does really make use of the colour palette on the old Beeb pretty effectively. Um, it's a very bright and sort of vibrant looking game, I think. Um, it's a shame it doesn't have any kind of music effects, but, I mean, you get the jingle, obviously, when you start the game and when you... <laughs> and also when you lose. Um, the sound effects are pretty uh, pretty good. Got some nice sort of crashing sounds of the swords above. And I don't think I can kill this guy. No, he's... Not, he's... Lightning, lightning doesn't do anything to him, and I don't think the blue blobs do anything to him either. Ah, inventory management, eh? That's uh, that's a, that's a common theme in 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 BBC micro games, and actually games in general, I suppose. Um, although a lot of more modern games, you can pretty much carry as many items as you want. Really, it's uh, kind of takes away the challenge of inventory management. Oh dear! Oh, what a long plummet! Yes. Okay. Well, let's try the magenta screen again. Um, Yes, uh, there are some other favourites of mine um, which uh, came out for the Beeb, which require you to balance the uh, the objects that you're carrying. I don't know how much of it was a deliberate um, design choice and how much of it is really just down to how much um, the game is able to store in memory at any given point in time and perhaps the uh, balancing of inventory in some respects was also a, ma a memory management exercise actually. I wouldn't be surprised. All right, let's do some jumping here. There we go. And the last one. Ah, no! So I had jumped correctly, but the arrow, unfortunately, uh, meant that I didn't make it to the other side. So that's a bit of a shame. I mean, I just, I, you know, as I'm continuing to play this, I just keep thinking, goodness me, I mean, if you imagine trying to do this without any cheats at all. I'm not sure that I would have ever got to screens like this without, without a, uh, a hacked version of the game. I'm fairly sure that back in the day uh, you could you could apply your own pokes to the game um, without needing to have a fully hacked version. I think if you if you poked certain uh, certain bytes of memory after loading but not executing the game, it would um, disable certain features like the arrows. Oh no, I've done it again. I need to wait for that arrow before I. Uh... You see what I mean? Even with the cheats enabled, you still have to do a certain amount of thinking about when to jump and when not to jump. Otherwise, you still end up. Uh, dying. I mean, you don't lose any lives, but you don't make any progress either, sadly. Alright, so, jump. You see what I mean about timing those jumps? I mean, oh no, I've done it again! Ugh. Too much talking. Um, you really do need to uh, to time it properly and wait. You, know, you can't just... Uh... Anyway, let's just try going the other way and see if there's anything else exciting around here. I can't remember whereabouts the dragon is. Um... As I say, I think playing this when I was younger, I definitely employed some sort of poke to uh, at least disable the arrows on the game because I do remember one. Well, that wasn't very good, was it? I do remember on one particular occasion coming across the old uh, dragon. I didn't have pieces of the sword to, to do anything with him, of course, but uh, it was still quite the uh, quite the event to come across the dragon. All right, well, we'll try going going this way again. Um, yeah, so I'd be very interested to hear from anyone who uh, has you know, played and enjoyed Wizard Or. I don't know whether some of you may have given it a try in the past and have just given up in frustration. It's definitely in the, the sort of... Oh dear, I've done it again. Plummeting to my doom. It is definitely up there with the sort of frustrating games of the Beeb. Um, although I feel, you know, I've been a little kinder to it than I have with some others, like Predator, for example, which is, again, a very frustrating game to play, um, simply because 
it is possible to play it with you know a variety of different cheats enabled and i feel that you could probably improve your gameplay by gradually reducing the number of cheats i mean i've just gone full nuclear option here and employed all of them at once but the fact that you can you know potentially disable the arrows hurting you but not disable the uh, the enemies from hurting you if you bump into them that's that's one way of trying to gradually eke up the difficulty level Ooh, the red zone here now i'm not sure if this is just the other side of a, a room i was in before or not but uh, let's have a look let's jump over here oh no be careful of that oh <sighs> that was annoying oh dear oh dear oh dear all right well let's try that one again but yes, the, uh, the the graded cheating and just kind of building up your abilities on Wizard or until you eventually you're able to sort of play without the stabilizers on, so to speak. Um, I think that the fact that you can oh God, goodness me, <laughs> the fact that you can do that. I mean, I'm not doing very well even with all these cheats on. Um, it means that uh, you know the game has sort of almost it's almost like having different difficulty settings for it. I, I think of it more like that rather than cheats per se. You know, some people are very sensitive to the invocation of cheating. Um, but for me, I think it's more about just being able to explore the game. And I think we've done plenty of that. Um, I think, you know, we've really given Wizardor a uh, run for its money here and we've seen you know, more of the game, certainly, than uh, I've ever seen without cheats switched on. So I hope you've enjoyed that run through of Wizardor. Um, I'd be very keen to hear from anyone that's made more progress with it than I have, particularly without cheats enabled. Um, but I'm going to leave it there and uh, I hope you'll join me again for the next video in the series. And until then, Goodbye.